Okay, guys, let's get into the mechanics of recording in Logic now that we've learned all that intro stuff, you know, setting up through monitoring, what are audio regions, preferences and all that, right? So, um, let's start by looking at um, assigning physical inputs on the audio interface to our audio tracks. Um, before we get into it, let me just explain for beginners how inputs work on audio interfaces. It's really important you understand this, right? So... Audio interfaces can have different amounts of inputs. You get two input interfaces, four input interfaces, eight input interfaces, 16 input interfaces, etc. But um, they always work in multiples of two. Okay, so let me draw a pair of inputs. Right, there's a pair of inputs, right? XLR. and line input, dual inputs, right? Now, they're always tied together as a stereo pair. That's their default operating mode. Inputs always work together in pairs. So here we've got input one and two on a two input device. And those two inputs by default are tied together in stereo. But at any time, they can be split in half so that each one operates independently in mono. That's how inputs on interfaces always work. They're always tied together in a stereo pair like that, but they can be split in half to be two separate mono inputs. So if we have more inputs, let's duplicate these. Okay, now we've got a four input device. Now we've got a six input device. Now we've got an eight input device huh? but it always works the same it always works the same so these additional pairs this is input three and four tied together as a stereo pair inputs five and six tied together as a stereo pair inputs seven and eight tied together as a stereo pair right? so if you have a stereo record track whether it's in logic cubose pro tools or whatever the way it works is that stereo record track can only be fed by stereo inputs 1 and 2 together as a pair, or 3 and 4 together operating as a pair, or 5 and 6 together operating a pair, or, or 7 and 8 together operating as a pair. What you can't have is you can't have a stereo record track being fed from inputs 2 and 3 together, or 4 and 5 together, or 6 and 7 together, because those inputs come from different stereo pairs. They can't be tied together to feed a stereo track. All right? So that's how it works. Inputs are pairs of inputs, which can be split up in, in half to be mono if you want, but they can only ever work as stereo pairs in their original configuration. One and two is a pair, three and four is a pair, five and six is a pair, seven and eight is a pair. But split into mono, we'd have mono inputs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, like that, okay? So, that's how it works, all right? So I'm gonna create a new project. And when you create a new project, this drop-down appears, you are forced to create at least one track. Also, this same drop-down appears every time you create a track as you're working on your project, right? So we're gonna create an audio track, and at the point here where I'm creating the track, I can assign the input for that track here. Okay, now you don't have to get hung up about this because even after you've created the track, you can change the input for that track any time. But you have the option to do it here when you actually create the track if you want, right? Now, um, I have a Scarlet Solo USB interface attached to this Mac. I only have two possible physical inputs. So when I go to assign the input for this track, my possible inputs are no input, right? Any track, any audio track can have its input set to no input. You would choose this if you're creating an audio track to use with Apple Loops or for previously recorded audio to be dragged onto, such as loops and things, right? You would choose no input if you want to have an audio track with no physical recording input. After that, However many inputs you have available on your interface, they will be listed as possible mono input choices. So you can create an audio track 
a mono track receiving on input one, or I can create a, a mono track receiving on input two. They're my possible mono inputs I have on my system. After that, you can select your inputs paired together as stereo pairs to um, feed a stereo track. Now I only have two inputs, so my next choice is input one and two, my only two inputs tied together as a stereo pair. So if I choose this, I'll be creating a stereo track receiving on input one and two. All right? And then finally, you can assign any of Logic's 64 buses to an audio track as the input. We'll look at that in more detail in its own section, right? Okay. So I'm gonna set up this um, this track and its channel receiving from no input. And then just to tell you, what, you know, every, remember every single track, whether it's a, an audio track, a drum track, an instrument track or whatever, all tracks have a monitor channel. So when we go to create a track, we're creating a track and monitor channel combination. The, the two are tied together. So we always create a track and its channel, right? So I'm gonna create uh, an audio track and its monitor channel assigned to no input, create. Okay, and there it is. Let's just zoom in a bit. Okay, so um, to play along with me, you want to have your inspector column open here. Now, I mentioned this before earlier in this tutorial series, but if you're unfamiliar with logic, in your inspector column here, the left channel is always the monitor channel for the selected track. And the right channel in the inspector column by default always shows a copy of the final stereo channel of Logic's mixer, which feeds the outputs of our audio interface. All right. So I've created a track and channel combination, but I didn't choose an input for that. But we can change it any time after the track and its channel have been created. On the channel here, we have the input slot. Okay, and next to it is the channel mode icon there. Now you can see it's a single circle. You can also see the meter at the bottom of the channel for the track is mono width. It's narrow. Look at this meter on this final stereo channel of Logic's mixer. This is a stereo channel. We've got a wide double width stereo meter. So we've got a mono single width meter, a mono icon there on the input slot. So we have here a mono track and channel strip combination. Because it's mono, when I drop the input list down, I can choose no input, or I can choose any of the mono inputs on my system, which for me is only a possibility of either input one or input two. That's the only two inputs I have, right? So I can switch this track and its channel combination to receive on any mono input on my system. Or I can assign any of Logic's 64 buses as the input for this track but and its channel. But again, we'll look at this in more detail later buses for inputs. But here, if I click on this um, channel mode icon, I can switch the track and its channel to be stereo. Boom, like that. Now the pair of circles overlap. It's, um, it's now a, a stereo width meter. We now have a stereo track and channel combination. So when I drop the input list down to change the input, I can again set it to no input or I can choose any stereo pair of inputs on my interface to feed this stereo track and channel. Now I've only got two inputs, so my only choice is the two inputs, input one and two, tied together as a stereo pair. Or again, we can choose any of the buses to feed the, the, uh, the stereo track and channel, but again, we'll look at that further down the line. Okay, so mono track and channel combination, you can choose any mono input to feed that track and its channel. Stereo track and um, channel combination, you can choose any pair of inputs on your system to feed that track and its channel. But I've only got two possible inputs. So I, for stereo, I can choose the pair that I have as input one and two together. In mono mode, I can choose either of those inputs as a mono input. All right. But what if I had eight physical inputs on my audio interface? Let's quickly look at that. If I had an eight input audio interface and I set up a mono track and channel strip combination, then I can drop the list down and choose any of those eight mono inputs to feed my mono track and channel strip combination. So I drop the list down and I can choose any of the eight available mono inputs. 
input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 8. In this case I'm choosing input 2 to feed my mono track and channel combination. But if I have a stereo track and channel strip combination, let's switch it to stereo, and an 8 input audio interface, then when I drop the list down I can choose any of those 8 inputs paired together as stereo pairs to feed my stereo track and channel strip combination. So my choices are now input 1 and 2 as a stereo pair, input 3 and 4 as a stereo pair, input 5 and 6 as a stereo pair, or input 7 and 8 as a stereo pair to feed this stereo track in its channel. So I choose input 1 and 2 here to feed my stereo track and channel combination. Okay, so um, now one thing before we go any further. For beginners out there, people might be thinking, well, um, I want to record my guitar and vocal at the same time. I want to sing and play the guitar and record them both. Now, you might make a mistake and say, well, okay, I want to record, I've got a microphone plugged into input one on my interface for my vocal, and I've got another mic plugged into input two for my guitar. So what I need to do is set a stereo track and channel, receiving on that pair of inputs, and then if I hit record, it'll record my mic for my vocal and my mic for my guitar, both at the same time as I sing and play. But this isn't the way to do it. If you set up a stereo track and channel receiving on a pair of inputs, and let's say input 1 is my mic, which it is, and input 2 is my guitar, right? If you do it like this on a stereo track, when you have a pair of inputs feeding a stereo track, the odd number of that pair of inputs is always the left of the stereo pair and the even number of that pair of inputs is always the right of that stereo pair. So now I've got input 1 and 2 feeding into this stereo track in its channel. Input 1 is my mic, input 2 is my guitar. And I think to myself, well, I'll now record my guitar and vocal together at the same time as I play and sing. Well, uh, but it doesn't work like that. If I get my guitar now... Put input monitoring on so I can hear them both. Okay, I can hear my guitar, I can hear my vocals, so I think, okay, I'm doing this right. I hit record and I'm going to sing and play and record them both. But What's happened, if you do it like this, you're recording a stereo recording from a stereo pair of inputs. Yes, the vocal is plugged into input one. Yes, the guitar is plugged into input two. But if you record on a stereo track like this from a stereo pair, you end up with a stereo recording. And note the region's got a pair of circles on it telling you it's a stereo recording, right? And on the left side, from input one is my vocal. On the right side from input two is my guitar. But they're both together on the same file. Right? And input one, the vocal is always on the left, so that's panned left. And input two is always on the right, because it's the even number of the pair, which is always on the right, so my guitar is panned to the right. So I've got the vocal and the guitar recorded as a stereo file with the vocal pan to the left and the guitar pan to the right. I can't mix it, I can't do anything with it. So, let's delete that. So if you want to sing and play at the same time and record the vocal and the guitar on two separate inputs, the way to do it is we create one track, we make it mono, receiving on our mic for our vocal, then we create a second track receiving on input 2 in this case, which is my guitar input. So you have one track receiving on the vocal input, one track receiving on the guitar input, right? and then you put them both into record mode, like that, and record the vocal to one track and the guitar to the other track, both at the same time. So you can still sing and play, and you're still recording them both, but they're on separate tracks now. 
and we end up with and we end up with one track records the vocal from input one in this case whichever input your vocal mic is plugged into the other track records from the input the guitar is plugged into you end up with two separate recordings one is the vocal one is the guitar they're separate they can be mixed okay that's how you should do that let's get rid of these get rid of that track okay so that's um the basics of assigning inputs to um, audio tracks and channels remember the track and the channel are tied together when you create a track you're creating a track and a channel strip combination all right um, so let's look at like you know just the absolute basics of recording now 